Hello, I'm Brian with Mead Instruments, and I'm going to show you the new Siri 6000 50mm guide scope. I'm also going to show you how to use this guide scope later on, so be sure to stick around for that. The Mead 50mm guide scope has a 50mm objective lens at f3.2, which makes it very short and compact, uh, but also very suitable for auto guiding both short and long focal length telescopes. In the box, you'll get the 50mm guide scope with a six point adjustment bracket. Uh, it will include a 17 millimeter extension with T-threads to reach focus with different accessories, uh, a universal dovetail mounting bracket with some mounting hardware. And uh, unlike a lot of other 50 millimeter guide scopes in the market, it is a solid six point adjustment. Uh, some may use an O-ring in the front, which is often okay for a viewfinder, but obviously for a guide scope, you need to have the most solid connection possible between the guide scope and your imaging telescope. The guide scope also employs a helical fine focuser, which is very nice, it locks the orientation while you can make a fine focus. It accepts many inch and a quarter accessories, including eyepieces. So in fact, you could actually use an eyepiece visually with this and uh, turn it into a very high quality viewfinder. It also has T-threads at the end so that it can adapt to a variety of different cameras, your auto guider may use an inch and a quarter nose piece or T-threads or both. So you have both options with this guide scope. Newer auto guider cameras like our LPIG and LPIG Advanced use very small pixels and the software, the guiding software that you'll use these cameras with like PHD2 guiding uh, uses sub-pixel guiding corrections. And so what that means is with small pixels, sub-pixel correction, you no longer need such a long focal length guide scope to piggyback onto your main imaging scope. In fact, the little 50 millimeter guide scope like this is suitable for a very large range of focal lengths. Now, if you have an exceptionally large scope with a lot of focal length, like say uh, a 14 or a 16 inch F10 ACF, uh, then you may at that point want to consider going with something like an off-axis guider or perhaps using a little bit more focal length for your, for your guiding system. But in most cases, even up through a couple thousand millimeters of focal length, a little guide scope is quite sufficient for that. And it's saving the weight of your overall system, so it's not taxing the mount so much. So there are actually some advantages that may in fact improve your, your overall imaging performance while also saving a lot on space and weight and focal length for your guide scope. The Series 6000 50 millimeter guide scope attaches to your Mead optical tube just like a finder scope would. Depending on your optical tube of choice, you can either replace your existing finder scope with this guide scope or have both installed simultaneously for more flexibility. Our Mead ACF telescopes will allow simultaneous use of both your existing finder and the guide scope as there are multiple mounting holes available for attaching accessories. Note that some LX90 optical tube assemblies do not have the second mounting hole position. Just check compatibility on your optical tube as there should be two mounting holes approximately three quarters of an inch apart to accept the mounting bracket. Other smaller telescopes like our 80 millimeter APO only have locations for one device. When using with our ACF telescopes and mounting simultaneously, simply attach the included universal mounting base onto the optical tube using the two included mounting screws. Locate the two socket head or Phillips head screws located on the optical tube. Carefully remove the screws with the 332nd Allen wrench. Now take the included screws and finder base that came with your 50 millimeter guide scope and install the base. Before use, we recommend aligning the guide scope with your imaging telescope just as you would a viewfinder. It's not an entirely necessary step, but it does make it a lot easier to locate your first guide star knowing that you're pointing at a bright target. Uh, to get started, uh, the moon is an excellent target if the moon happens to be out. If the moon is not out, you can use a, a bright star, an easy target, uh, just to get something centered in your guide scope first. It, again, it would be a lot like uh, aligning your viewfinder for your telescope. When aligning your guide scope, it's good to start with an inch and a quarter eyepiece uh, to use it visually. You can also go straight to using your auto guider, but it can be a lot easier to find something visually with the eyepiece first, especially if your focus is way off. You want to center the moon or your moderately bright star or bright target. 
in the eyepiece of your telescope first. Again, this is the same approach that you would use when aligning the viewfinder of your telescope. Once the object is centered in the telescope, you'll then want to make adjustments to the six point adjustment bracket on the guide scope until that same target is centered in the guide scope. And this is why it helps to start visually with an inch and a quarter eyepiece that you would supply just to get the object sighted. Now, if the object is out of focus, as it likely will be, you'll make adjustments to the helical focuser until it comes into focus. And this is a very fine focus adjustment. So you may find you actually have to turn it quite a few times. It's something like an excess of like 15 full rotations to go from one end of focus to the other. But as a result, you get a very nice, uh, fine focus to dial in. If you are finding that you can't reach focus, then you can use the 17 millimeter extension piece that the guide scope comes with, which will distance your eyepiece 17 millimeters further back uh, just so you can uh, obtain a little extra distance if you need it. A lot of that will just depend on the particular eyepiece you're using. The same extension can be used for your auto guider should it need that extra distance to reach focus. Now that we know we have something bright centered in our guide scope, it's going to be a lot easier to get it to reach focus with your auto guider. So we'll take the eyepiece out, and in this case I'm going to use the LPIG Advanced camera as my auto guider. Change the orientation if you want to. Now, when I go to connect to the PC in a moment, even if I don't see anything through the auto guider, I know I'm centered on a bright target. So at that point, it's just a matter of reaching focus. I find this is actually very helpful. Otherwise, you're just kind of shooting in the dark. And you're not 100% sure if there's something in that uh, guide scope or not. Begin connecting your auto guider camera from the camera to your laptop with the USB cable. In this example, we're using the LPIG Advanced and plugging our USB from the camera to the laptop. And now we wanna plug the guide relays from the camera to the auto guide port on the mount. And this will also be true for many other auto guiders. Depending on the type of auto guider camera that you're using, you want to make sure you have the appropriate drivers installed. In this case, for the LPIG Advanced, we want to make sure that we have the ASCOM platform installed. Then we also want to make sure that we have the Meadcam ASCOM drivers installed, and those are included with the LPIG and LPIG Advanced cameras. Once you have this installed, you can use it with popular software like PHD2 Guiding and a number of other programs. Now that everything's connected, I'm going to go and open PHD2 Guiding, which is a free download online. I'm going to connect to the LPIG Advanced using the Meadcam ASCOM driver. Notice here I've selected on camera for the mount. Uh, that means that the auto guide relay cable is connected from the camera to the auto guide port on the mount. And that's a common configuration for many other auto guiders too. And let's start with a one half second exposure begin looping exposures and we should expect to see something because we know we're pointing at a bright star and there it is uh, but as you can see it's not focused um, but that's that's actually not too far off so we're then going to go ahead and dial in the focus uh, and make adjustments to the uh, helical focuser on the guide scope and you'll simply do this until you get your focused guide star. Now this is where I do find it very helpful to have the helical fine focuser um, with you know at f3.2 uh, with small pixels on this camera and you know the the delicate nature of trying to get a guide star focused uh, it's really really helpful to have a fine focus on your actual guide scope. That's not always the case for a lot of guide scopes out there and it is sometimes a little bit more difficult when you don't have that extra level of focusing control. Now once we've reached focus, and this is important, you want to lock down the focus lock thumbscrew that's on the guide scope. 
because we want to anchor down everything and th this freezes the focuser so that there's no shift or backlash or anything of that nature. And now's your opportunity once you've reached focus to make sure that your six uh, adjustment screws are snug and that your, your base attachment screw is also secure. So you're basically just checking your guide scope to make sure that nothing is flexing or moving and so that that's solid in relation to your imaging scope. Okay, now that we have focused on our guide star, we can proceed to start auto guiding. We'd select the guide star in PHD2 guiding, proceed to begin auto guiding, and from there we can start our imaging sequence in our main imaging camera, whichever one it might be, if it's a DSLR or a dedicated CMOS camera through your main imaging telescope. And now from here, uh, using an auto guiding program like PHD2, it, it's pretty intuitive, but it is a topic of its own, and I'll be covering that in some more detail in another quick guide video, so be sure to stay tuned there. But from this point forward, you are ready to begin auto guiding. It'll send small corrections to the mount, and you can start to take long exposure astrophotos with accurate uh, guiding that will result in pinpoint stars.